In the field of statistics and machine learning, it doesn't matter what you're trying to predict, your success ultimately depends on the quality of the data you have. This applies to more sophisticated systems like AI chatbots as well. Not too long ago, as long as the data quality was acceptable on a common sense level, people would use it because performance could be easily improved by scaling up the data in model size. But now, with the entire internet has already been trained on, and Nvidia sitting at 3.5 trillion market cap, researchers have become more selective in how they curate data as performance improvements have stopped increasing exponentially. And so far, there has been a lot of good research around data curation. For example, a paper titled Emergent Properties with Repeated Examples showed that multiple smaller datasets can be more effective than a single large dataset even if the latter has more unique data. More specifically, they say that you cannot just dump new data into a model all at once. You have to train the AI model using multiple small datasets while also interleaving new and old data. Massive datasets can overwhelm the model and hit a wall on its performance. You can say that the model needs time to fully capture the pattern before it can effectively learn new patterns, which is somewhat similar to grokking where the model overfits to the point that its performance suddenly improves as if something within the model has clicked into place. Anyways, the main point here is that we should focus more on how we can make AI learn effectively rather than how much data we can provide it to learn. A prime example of how we are currently making AI learn is instruction tuning, where we train large language models in dialogue formats to have them become an AI chatbot. And right now, to make LLM even more robust, synthetic data is heavily used to create this formatted data to make an LLM get used to a certain type of formatting or protocol. However, in the process of us implementing the AI models to more applications with synthetic data, we are also at the same time making the model more artificial than intelligent. In a paper called A Tale of Tales, Model Collapse as a Change of scaling laws, the authors pointed out that the huge influx of synthetic data we used for training can really mess with the scaling laws we rely on to predict the quality of the resulting model. And that might be because synthetic data is generally flawed. You see, a typical human written data has a heavy tail distribution. This means that besides common words like and, uh, or the, which are highly frequent, there are also a long tail of unusual and unique words that are actually really important. Synthetic data, on the other hand, lacks this heavy and diverse tale of unusual words. So the model is like learning English through TikTok that has short and concise content without much language complexity. It might at the end be good at making attention-seeking and snappy sentences, but it would struggle to write long-form content like a high-quality video essay or even a novel. And when the AI is fed too much of these sloppy, truncated data, its learning would eventually hit a wall, aka model collapse. Even though the unique and unusual words that humans write are rare, it is still these crucial examples that provide depth and complexity in the data. Why would a model generate sloppy synthetic data then? Well, that might have to do with the attention mechanism in the sampling methods. In a very naive example, the model might be presented with three words that have a high probability of appearing as the next token. Typically, the highest would be chosen, so that means the other two would not be used. This doesn't mean the other two words are less related. They might even generate better sentences going down the line. And this leads the model to consistently choose the most probable probable optimal word, avoiding nuanced words that make language more engaging and expressive. As a result, the output tends to become repetitive and bland, lacking the richness that comes from more varied and lower probability word choices. This is why people can still identify AI-generated blocks even when AI is this good already. The blandness and the sloppiness do stick out like a sore thumb. I guess we can call this slop suspicious now. While this can potentially be fixed through prompting, hence prompt engineering, it still doesn't change the fact that we are creating a problem for ourselves. But we cannot just remove synthetic data from the instruction tuning process either, so maybe we need to take a step back and change our perspectives. If you think about it, research now has mostly been from a top-down perspective. Intelligence already exists and now we are finding out how it emerged, but what we have done so far is swapping out the parts to see what works better and what doesn't, which seems inefficient. So we need to get to the bottom of this and find out how AI can now produce intelligent and logical-like behaviors. This brings us to the paper that I really wanted to talk about called Intelligence at the Edge of Chaos. The authors proposed a really interesting idea, which is that intelligence can emerge from modeling simple systems as long as they exhibit complex behaviors, even when the process that generates the data lacks inherent intelligence. Okay, not gonna lie, the first time when I read this, I was completely lost about what they exactly mean about that. But trust me, they do have a pretty interesting point. Have you seen this thing called the game of life? It's like a simulation where every pixel follows a set of rules, and these rules 
controls determine whether each pixel moves, disappears, or appears in the next time step. The simulation can get really fascinating, where simple patterns can evolve into surprisingly complex structures, some random arrangements might stabilize, oscillate, or even move across the grid, some patterns like blocks and beehives remain static, while others like gliders travel diagonally. This paper we're talking about today used a similar idea called elementary cellular automata, which is pretty much the same thing as the game of life, but is much simpler and one-dimensional. In their experiment setup, they define a total of 256 rules that are 8-bit long, where each rule determines the state of a cell in the next time step based on its current state and the states of its two immediate neighbors. And when you allow the rules to run over several time steps and arrange the output so that each rule represents one time step, it creates a visual pattern. These patterns can reveal how each of the rules evolve over time, often producing complex and intricate designs from very simple rules. These patterns can then be further categorized based on their behaviors. Class 1, which evolves to a homogeneous state. Class 2, which forms simple periodic structures. Class 3, which produces chaotic and periodic patterns. And Class 4, which exhibits complex structures. Now, what's left is to generate data for the experiments using these four classes of ECA. So by randomly initializing a one-dimensional vector and letting the system follow a rule for 1,000 steps, you can generate a very decent amount of unique data, which would then be enough to train a GPT-2 model. And instead of having GPT-2 predicting the next token, the model is set up to predict the next row, treating each time step as a sequence. So they pre-trained a total of 256 models on each of the 256 rules. While you might think, what's the point of doing this? Isn't the model just going to learn the rules? Well, don't worry, we'll get to that. So the authors observed a trend that the class of the rules influences the model's logical performance, which is pretty surprising. More specifically, 22, 137, 150, and 110 are rules that gave better performance, while their rules are categorized as chaotic and complex themselves. If the model is pre-trained with rules in the periodic class, its performance is not that bad either. But the model pre-trained on the rules in the uniform class seems to perform relatively bad. But how is their performance evaluated? So what the authors have done to the pre-trained GPT-2 models is freezing the weights and changing the input and output layers corresponding to the evaluations they are running. And there are three evaluations they have run in total, easy, hard, and challenging. Both easy and hard evaluations involve assessing the model's ability to deduce rules through observational reasoning. In the easy evaluation, the model is shown a 3x3 three three shape where the colors change in a predetermined sequence following a rule. In the hard evaluation, the model observes four unique 5x5 five five shapes with transformations that include rotation, translation, and color changes. All models perform near perfectly on these tasks, so the authors shifted their focus to efficiency, which is defined as the inverse of the number of epochs needed to reach 80% accuracy. As for the challenging evaluation, it requires predictive reasoning. So given a set of rules, the model had to predict the best possible outcome with the task being chess. And using data from players with 2200 plus ELO ratings, the GPT-2 models were modified to predict the next best chess move. So if we line up all the evaluations from easy, hard to challenging, you can see that rules generating more complex patterns led to significantly better performance on a harder downstream tasks. And in this violin chart, the top performing class is rules with complex patterns. On the side, the average performance for the periodic patterns was higher than the chaotic patterns, but the upper quartile for the chaotic patterns do exceed the periodic patterns. This suggests that while the periodic patterns generally led to more consistent performance, chaotic patterns occasionally produce models with exceptionally strong outcomes. And one of the reasons why the models train on certain chaotic rules, such as rule 105, 146, and 150, have poorer performance is because the chaotic systems lack the structured patterns necessary for effective learning. In other words, they may be too random to predict. And if these overly chaotic patterns are excluded, there seems to be a trend where in between complexity and chaos, there is a sweet spot that will make the logical reasoning behavior emerge. But we have to keep in mind that this research suggested this idea based on a 1% increase in the chess performance. I mean, their results is statistically significant, so maybe we can believe it. And as the rule complexity increases, we can definitely see a positive correlation in all tasks. And if you think harder about it, the rules are all simple and straightforward. It's just the pattern it generates are different. So that 1% increase may just show how powerful the rules are. But maybe drawing the conclusion here is still a bit too early. It's pretty hard to convince yourself that some underlying rules in the data would affect the resulting performance, right? And since ECA are inherently 
memoryless. For each model, a straightforward next step solution always exists because the model can just memorize the rule. So to find out, they analyzed the self-attention mechanism of the GPT-2 models and examined the attention values corresponding to the final 10 states before reaching the target state. It turns out that the models trained on rules that produce more complex dynamics tend to allocate higher attention to the last 10 states, which basically means models trained on complex rules would integrate information from past states to make their predictions. In contrast, you can see on the graph that the uniform class did not utilize the previous states as the line stayed flat. And if you look at the periodic class, it behaves even funnier. It goes up, down, up, down, and pretty spiky, I would say. This behavior seems to be expected because if you look at the nature of rule 179, which produces an alternating pattern that repeats every two time steps, you can also see that in the attention graph, the model appears to be utilizing attention only between this alternating cycle rather than the whole general state history. But how did the complexity class not produce a similar problem? Since the patterns are a lot more complex but not completely chaotic, the model would need to rely more attention on its previous states to accurately predict the future state. So in the process of finding the rule, the model is also trained to use its attention even more. With this, the authors conjecture that this complexity in data is what enables the model to become intelligent and capable of repurposing learned reasoning to downstream tasks. What's even more mind-blowing is that the researchers initially thought predicting just one step ahead would be too easy as the model could simply learn the underlying rules, so they trained another model to predict five steps at once, expecting this model to be better than the one-step model. However, the model trained to predict only the next step not only learned non-trivial solutions, but it even outperformed the model trained to predict five steps ahead. So if you look at this plot, the brighter the dots, the more complex the pattern is. And there are more dots in one step's half than five steps half, showing that more models perform better when trained on one step only. This may indicate that focusing on immediate step-by-step -step predictions may lead to deeper understanding and more efficient learning. As for why models trained to predict five steps perform the worst, which is another interesting result by itself, maybe because it's predicting too far into the future, making it harder to capture the pattern in the data. Well, that's just my guess. But this does brings us to a really interesting conclusion, which is that by having the model learning to incorporate past states, it will develop generalizable logic that can be reused across tasks. On top of that, it shows that AI models like Transformer is capable of learning complex, non-trivial solutions, even when simpler, more trivial ones are available, and it's maybe thanks to them being over-parameterized. So as a result, it explores a broader search space and creates solutions that integrate historical information to become more robust. As for the training data, the sweet spot arises when the complexity is high enough to challenge the model but still retains underlying patterns that the model can exploit, which is referred to being at the edge of chaos described by Langton in 1990. So looking forward, maybe researchers would need to find ways to connect this idea to LLM. Maybe finding the patterns in the data to satisfy the learning conditions would lead to more transferable reasoning capabilities. The same for synthetic data. Instead of generating the periodic type of data, we just need to find way to generate the synthetic data that belongs in the class for complexity. On the other hand, this paper may help our understanding of human intelligence too. The concept of intelligence emerged in systems operating at the edge of chaos aligns with cognitive science theories suggesting that the human brain functions at a critical state, balancing different dynamic states in this unpredictable world. By understanding the conditions under which LLMs develop intelligence, we may gain deeper insights into the fundamental processes behind the emergence of intelligence in both artificial and human cognition, which could also help us to predict the timeline for the emergence of AGI. So yeah, if today's topic fascinates you and makes you want to get into machine learning, today's sponsor Brilliant might be the perfect gateway for you. Brilliant is a learning platform where you learn by doing with thousands of interactive lessons ranging from math, data analysis, programming, and AI. This means that you'll be solving problems hands-on and play with concepts interactively, which is also proven to be six times more effective than watching lecture videos. With all the content on Brilliant being carefully crafted by an award-winning team of teachers, researchers, and professionals from MIT, Google, and more, Brilliant helps you build your critical thinking skills through problem solving and not memorizing. Along with easy to access lessons, whether you want to spend five minutes a day or chomp it all down during your free time, these fun lessons can help you to have both personal and professional growth. Right now, they have also just published their lessons on how LLMs work, where they provide interactive content where you can explore how LLMs build vocabulary, choose their next word, and more. And if you want to revisit some of the Calculus 1 or 2.0, 
two concepts, they have some of the best visualizations to help you learn or refresh your memory with, and maybe playing with Brilliant will help you build a super strong intuition that you'll never forget. So to try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash buy cloud or click on the link down in the description. You will also get a 20% off an annual premium subscription. And thank you Brilliant for sponsoring this video. And if you like today's collection of papers, definitely check out my newsletter where I cover the latest and the hottest research papers that I might not even have time to make videos about. It is a weekly issue that contains both the latest AI research breakdowns and news, so don't miss out. Thank you for watching. A big shout out to Andrew Laschelius, Chris Ledoux, Deegan, Miguelim, Robert Zaviasa, Louis Muck, Ben Shainer, Marcelo Ferreira, and many others that support me through Patreon or YouTube. Follow me on Twitter if you haven't, and I'll see y'all in the next one.